My name is Dr. Leonard Petricelli. I'm the chair of the Department of Neuroscience at Mayo Clinic in the Jacksonville campus in Florida. I'm also the Ralph and Ruth Abrams professor. My laboratory has been at the forefront of understanding how a genetic mutation called chromosome 9 ORF72 has been involved in ALS and frontal temporal dementia. A couple of years ago, we identified as a result of this genetic mutation that a novel protein can abnormally accumulate in the brains of these individuals. Subsequent to that, we've now recently shown that if you, act, if you take this genetic mutation and overexpress it in, in a mouse, you can mimic the disease features, including neuronal loss, um, behavioral deficits, and uh, the neural pathology that is found in individuals with this genetic mutation. So we feel now that we are capable of testing um, the drug discovery efforts that will soon to emerge for uh, chromosome 9 uh, treatment in this novel mouse model. And so we're in particularly very excited about the opportunities that this will have, not only for our laboratory, but also the sci scientific community as well. The overview um, of our study today uh, that was recently published in the journal Science um, develops a novel model of ALS and frontal temporal dementia by specifically looking at a, a very common genetic mutation that is found in these patients and how we can potentially provide a, not only a, a working model for future therapeutic um, um, trials, but also understanding the disease mechanism that's associated with these devastating disorders. ALS and frontal temporal de dementia are two neurodegenerative diseases. ALS in particular uh, typically influences individuals in their mid um, adulthood, whereas frontal temporal dementia uh, uh, influences or affects individuals in their late adulthood. Um, they're two separate, um, but there's also overlapping um, um, pathologies between them. ALS um, is a disease where there's rapid motor neuron loss in the spinal cord, both upper and motor uh, uh, spinal cord, and these individuals begin to lose the ability to move, um, ultimately succumbing to an the inability to swallow um, and breathe. Whereas frontal temporal dementia is more of a disorder that not only is, uh, influences cognitive um, um, decline, but also the individuals also present with behavioral um, and language deficits. At Mayo Clinic, we're very translationally minded, and what that means is that for a basic scientist such as myself is to you know, form um, and develop studies as well as collaborations that will allow us to utilize this mouse model to improve patient care, especially for those individuals that have the genetic mutation. And so that's what our lab is, is going to be uh, doing and as our next steps is to form collaborations, which we have, um, to test small molecules, which are uh, in development ultimately in our animal model. And if proven to be successful, I think it would you know, continue the acceleration and um, the development of small molecules and therapies towards this genetic mutation. When the gene was identified by Dr. Rosa Rademakers in 2011, um, we became very interested in, in studying uh, this disease. One of the things that Mayo Clinic um, has a rich history of doing is modeling um, not only identifying these genes, but also modeling them in cell culture as well as in animal models. And fundamentally, that's what we did. We uh, took this gene as, uh, as a, a result of a repeat expansion, a genetic mutation, and it repeats itself over and over again. And so what we did was uh, use a combination of molecular cloning as well as viral approaches to overexpress this mutant gene in animals with the hope that we would perhaps be able to model it from a neuropathological perspective, a behavioral perspective, and understanding, once again, the implications that this may have um, from a mechanistic perspective, as well as with our overall goal of developing a preclinical model, something that we could potentially utilize for upcoming and emerging uh, small molecule therapies that will allow us to eventually test before they will proceed uh, to clinical trials. The significance of our study is the fact that we were able to model um, the disease pathology um, by overexpressing this genetic mutation. And this is incredibly important because as therapies uh, will emerge targeting this re repeat expansion, we become now incredibly hopeful that not only can you target the pathology that is really associated with the chromosome 9 repeat expansion, but also the underlying pathology called TDP43 that also exists in these patients as well as sporadic. So in short, it, the therapy now will be able to target not only the, the pathology associated with the mutation, but also what is linked to it, downstream of it, and that's TDP43. And this is very, very significant. In the absence of this unexpected finding, that's the TDP43 neuropathology, 
I think we would have been a little bit skeptical whether or not we would have been able to target um, both pathologies. Um, now, in light of this uh, data, which the model is indicating to us, I think we will now be able to really understand and, and believe that we can perhaps target both of these pathologies that do exist in these patients.